Erythrocytes are red blood cells, as you know, and they're unique because they are very small compared to most cells and they don't contain anything besides um, any organelles. They do contain important things. Um, so this small size allows them to fit through even the smallest capillaries in your body, which most cells couldn't fit through. And of course their job is then gonna be to carry gases throughout the body. So the important component in erythrocytes what they're packed full of and gives them this red color is hemoglobin. So here is hemoglobin is a protein. It has a quaternary structure, which means that it's made up of four subunits. That's what these beta and alpha chains are. Chains are there's four of them all together, one, two, three, four that come together to form the full hemoglobin protein, and that means there's four sites here that contain an iron and a heme group. So this is a heme molecule that requires iron. That's why you need iron. Um, and when you have blood loss, you sometimes become anemic and need to intake more iron. And this heme is the red pigment that gives your red blood cells their red color. This is where um, oxygen and carbon dioxide are going to bind. So there are different forms of hemoglobin. There is oxyhemoglobin. This means hemoglobin that has oxygen bound to it. There is deoxyhemoglobin, no oxygen bound to it. And there is carbo, oh, is it carbo amino? Yes, carbamino hemoglobin that has um, CO2 bound to it. And we will look at each of these three more closely when we get to the respiratory system, because we'll look at gas transport on red blood cells more carefully then. Um, so at this point, a little bit broader. So if you don't have enough of these sites for oxygen to bind and carbon dioxide, because we need to be able to transport carbon dioxide out of our bodies, that's just as important. Um, it can be, be anemia. So anemia actually is a very broad category that refers to not enough oxygen carrying ability, um, deficiency in red, red blood cells and hemoglobin. So red blood cell slash hemoglobin deficiency. So you can imagine there can be a lot of causes of that. Diet can be a cause of anemia. Um, menstruation, maybe along with a diet that doesn't adequately replace um, the iron to be able to produce enough hemoglobin, a lack of iron in the diet. Um, blood loss, right? So hemorrhaging, um, blood loss via a hemorrhage, a, a damage or menstruation can cause anemia. And there's also some that are genetic. So diseases of the stem cells or bone marrow itself. And this is probably what you think of when you think, think of anemia. There's several types. Um, the main one I'll use as an example because it's a really great example of genetics and protein structure function is sickle cell. So sickle cell disease or sickle cell anemia is a one that you've probably heard of and it is due to a genetic mutation. Um, and what's really cool about it is the genetic mutation also has advantages in, some pop in certain contexts. So first I'll tell you what it is. Um, sickle cell anemia is when there is a single base mutation in the DNA so it's genetic change, and that results in a different RNA produced, right, of course, and that results in a different protein being produced. Now, sometimes that might not matter, depending on the structure of the protein. These proteins um, are very different in their properties. So when this protein is mutated, it causes a different shape. It, it results in a different protein shape, and the protein shape it results in tends to clump together. So here is clumped hemoglobin. Because there's a mutation here, you can't see it here, right? Because it's just one tiny little 
amino acid, but it changes how the proteins interact with each other. Um, it causes them to interact with each other opposed to be separate hemoglobins. Now this is actually advantageous for prevention of malaria infection. So this mutation occurs in places where malaria, um, mosquito-borne typically malaria is prevalent and it can be advantageous to have one copy of this mutant gene. So to be heterozygous for this mutation because then you've got enough normal hemoglobin and you've got some that are protected from malaria so that aren't damaged if you're exposed to malaria. Being homozygous for this mutation can be a disadvantage because then all of your hemoglobin is like this and your cells actually will sickle shape. So you actually can see this in the cells themselves. We have slides of these in lab, normal red blood cells, big, plump, happy things. Sickle cell are shaped like sickles, right? Like the tool, um, so they look like this. These get caught up in the capillaries, don't travel as well, and that's where it can become a problem that these folks can't carry oxygen around as efficiently, so that can result in um, problems with during exercise and also potentially like strokes if things get caught. So pretty cool example of kind of both pros and cons to a genetic mutation, being heterozygous often for genetic conditions or genetic genetics is helpful. It's often advantageous to be heterozygous, um, but becomes a problem when it's um, homozygous.